For day three, I would like you to uh, go over the review notes for Julius Caesar as you prepare for the Julius Caesar test. You can also work on your essay and finish it today. And as you study for the Julius Caesar test, there is a self test that you can do as well to help prepare for that. So uh, just to go over the notes, the review notes to study for your test. Some people have considered that this story ends so tragically because of the many errors made by the conspirators. And some of the errors are as follows. Um, Brutus joining the conspiracy in the first place, taking an oath, uh, the conspirators not killing Antony, not including Cicero, who was a good orator in the conspiracy, uh, letting Antony speak to the people without being watched at the funeral of Caesar, not making plans for running Rome, marching to Philippi instead of letting Antony's army come to them, sending all the army in at once, uh, the argument between Cassius and Brutus, letting the soldiers loot others and doing drastic things without being certain of the situation or there are misinterpretations of situations. So the chief conflict is between the conspirators, which is mainly Brutus and Cassius, and Caesar's great power. The climax is during the final battle just before Cassius and Brutus die. So to look a little bit at the structure of the play to review that, um, in A, um, the opening of the movement of action is in Act 1, Scene 2, when Cassius proceeds to influence Brutus. Um, the growth or development or complication of the plot is in Act 1, Scene 3 to Act 3, Scene 1, which is um, the progress of the conspirators to come up with their plan and, and develop it. The climax is in Act 3, Scene 1, with the death of Caesar, right up to the beginning of Antony's speech. The fall is in Act 3, Scene 2 to Act 5, Scene 2, which is Antony's speech, and then up into the final battle. And the catastrophe is Act 5, Scene 3 to Act 5, Scene 6, which is the final destruction of Brutus et al. Act 2 builds up the suspense of the play. The suspense is created... Um, through seven methods. So see if you can think of where they use these methods in Act 2. So it could be a conflict, a precarious situation, an apparently insolvable problem, foreshadowing, a delay in the action, a seesaw back and forth action, and a vigil waiting and watching to see what happens. So see if you can think of those moments um, in the play there. So in scene one, we hear Brutus convince himself with logical and honorable reasons to join the conspirators. Scene two, we think maybe Caesar will listen to his wife and won't go to the Senate, but he will, he does. This builds up suspense. In scene three, we are given another bit of suspense when we see that the conspirators' plan is no longer completely secret. Caesar may be warned in time and avoid being killed. Um, and lastly, scene four makes us wait impatiently with Portia for news of what happens at the Capitol. Act 3, scene 2, every part of the drama has a specific purpose or a reason for being included in the play. And this is known as a dramatic purpose. The purpose of any scene, character, dialogue, or monologue may include the following. It could be to develop the plot, to develop the characters or characterization, create suspense, create atmosphere, create mood, offer dramatic relief or comic relief, give information or arouse emotions. In this scene, Antony gives the main soliloquy by the antagonist. This soliloquy has many dramatic purposes. It reveals the mood of Antony, which is angry and revengeful. Number two, it reveals Antony's character, revengeful, crafty, cruel, and unfeeling to others. Three, it reveals his opinion of the conspirators that they are indeed murderers. <clears throat> and it reveals the motive and plans, which is to revenge Caesar's death. Number five, it creates suspense, how he will avenge or revenge Caesar's death. Six, it creates foreshadowing that there will be a great war. 
and seven advances the plot, we know he will oppose Brutus and the conspirators and civil war will result. Act three, scene three, in this, his speech, Antony appeals to the citizen sentimentality by using these words, wounds, tears, hearts, kisses, love. And to their greed, by referring to Caesar's will and saying they are his heirs. The purpose of the scene is to show the degree to which Antony has incited the crowd. They are now operating under mob rule. Act four, scene one, allows us to see what motivates the characters and how they feel about the coming battle. Here's an interesting note. Caesar was actually stabbed 33 times. In this scene, Cassius tells Messala that he had been a believer in the theories of Epicurus, but now he is changing his mind. Both Brutus and Cassius' philosophies fail him. Brick was a Stoic and Cassius an Epicurean. And here's a description of what Stoic and Epicurean mean. So Stoic is a school of philosophy that was sounded by Zeno, which was a Greek philosopher. He taught that virtue is the highest good and that men should be free from passion and unmoved by life's happenings. And we use the word stoic uh, to describe that. They should be controlled, calm, repressed feelings, indifferent to ple pleasure and pain, self-controlled and automatic. Do things automatically and without expression. Um, to live consistency with consistently with nature was a phrase used by the stoics. Human contract conduct should be brought into agreement with the nature of the law or the law of nature only by putting aside passion unjust thoughts and indulgent and performing duty with the right disposition can maintain true freedom and rule as lord over his own life things happen as the gods ordain human actions are necessary results of antecedent action then the epicureans um followed the philosophy or principles of Epicurus, who was a Greek philosopher who taught that pleasure is the highest good and that virtue alone produces pleasure. So the Epicureans were fond of pleasure and luxury, quite the opposite of the Stoics, really. They didn't believe in the supernatural. Epicurus prescribed a code of social conduct that included honesty, prudence, and justice in dealing with others, not because these attitudes were good in themselves, but to save the individual from society's retribution or punishment. He held blind destiny to be more dangerous to man's serenity than belief in fables about gods. Men could hope to appease the gods, but mechanical determinism was not influenced by prayers or entreaties. Denying the gods supernatural powers which would interfere with man or nature, he reduced the power of religious and physical forces on man's life and emphasized freedom of action. In Act 5, a huge misinterpretation occurs. Brutus decides to move his army without discussing it with Cassius. Cassius sees these troops and tells Titanius to ride down and see if they are friends or enemies. Pindarus, or Pindarus ascends to the nearest hill to watch. Pindarus thinks Titanius has been taken by the enemy when it is really friendly troops that encircle him, and he reports that to Cassius. Cassius thinks Titanius has been killed and has Pindarius kill him with the same sword that Cassius used to stab Caesar. When Titanius finds Cassius' body, he crowns him with a victory wreath and then kills himself. So lots of misunderstanding and lack of communication going on in Act 5. Near the end of the play, there is a moment of final suspense. This is the moment when things begin to look as if they will go the way of the protagonist. Lucilius pretends to be Brutus, giving Brutus a chance to escape. And there is a brief time when we think Brutus might survive. So hopefully those will help you study a bit for the play, um, or for the test. And here's a few other things that you should make sure you know. So know about Shakespeare's background. Um, the makeup of the Shakespearean theater, characters of Shakespearean tragedy, and a Shakespearean hero. So who is the tragic hero, and what is the nature of the major tragedy in Julius Caesar? Understand what a character foil is, what nemesis means. In what respect is Cassius the villain in the play? Show that there is also good in his nature. Explain the pathos of the play. What is the theme? 
What is dramatic irony in the play, dramatic purpose? Um, know what soliloquy and monologue and aside are. Uh, know the seven methods to create suspense. What a tragic flaw is, what coincidence is. Go over your grammar um, in lessons 11 to 13 as well as the vocabulary. And some other terms um, to know from Shakespeare, a miss. Ajurers, base, cobbler, countenance, couchings, air, hinder, knave, meet, miscontru, orator, and taper. So a few things you need to know um, to be ready for your Julius Caesar test. Okay, so that is all you need to do for today. So make sure you um, make up a note outline for yourself study, finish your essay, do the self quiz. And then day four, which is tomorrow, I want you to write your Julius Caesar test and make sure your essay is completed and submit it. And that will finish things up for Julius Caesar and week 11 of English 10-1. So have a good rest of your week.